Are you planning on buying a house in the next year or two? Today is all about home buyer tips that you might find useful. But first, if you like what you have to see today, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell. Hi, my name is Ray Henson. I'm an EXP real estate agent, and I specialize here in the Elk Grove and Sacramento areas. Today, I thought I'd go over a few first time home buyer tips with you. One of the first tips I have for you is um, go ahead and get your search started early in the process. Um, you wanna get out there, you wanna identify neighborhoods that you like, uh, maybe school systems that you want to have uh, in, at the house that you move into. Uh, how close are you going to be to your potential work? Um, just all kinds of things like that. You want to find out if you're going to you're going to be comfortable in that neighborhood. So once you've driven through the neighborhoods and you kind of identified where you want to be, I would reach out to a, a local real estate agent. If you don't know anybody, you could always feel comfortable giving me a call and I can do it for you. But I would just set up, I would have them set up a multiple listing service automated search for you in the houses, in, in the neighborhoods that you're interested in. And they could set them up to show you what's available in the, in the neighborhood, what's gone pending, and what's sold. And the great thing about that is over time, you get a, a good understanding of what the houses are listed for and what they're gonna sell, sell for ultimately versus the condition of those houses. So um, when you get into the ne negotiating and offer um, process, you'll feel very comfortable writing that offer at a certain given price. I can't tell you how many times I've taken clients out and we'll go through, and I'll start showing them houses, and we'll go through a, a first house and it'll be a beautiful house They'll think this is great, but I don't really know the neighborhood that well. So I think I'm gonna wait and look at a few more houses. Well, we look at a few more houses, that first house sells, and then all of a sudden they, they find out that that house was special for that neighborhood and that they should have probably written that offer up right, right then and there. But because they didn't spend the time over the first you know, over that first year or two before they were ready to buy, they didn't know that that was the house that was gonna be the one that was gonna make them happy. So it just made the process harder. So I, again, my first thing that I would do um, if I'm planning on buying a house anywhere is just start that search early. I think the second tip I would have for you is for you to go out and find a great lender. To me, having a great lender is almost as important as having a great real estate agent. Um, they help define your affordability, what your payments are gonna be, how much of a house you can afford. So they help in that process of picking out which kind of a house you can purchase. Um, they also can t give you different ideas on loan types. They can explain the loan process to you. Um, and they also are going to write you your pre-approval letter. Now, uh, one thing about the pre-approval letter, you want to make sure it's a pre-approval and not pre-qualification. And even if you uh, talk to them and see if you can get an underwriter approval, that is, uh, each one is a little step higher in the qualification process. So underwriter approval is almost, if you can get that, it's almost like putting out a cash offer because it's all done. So when you put your offer in, it just gives you, a, it puts you in a very strong position. Like I said, almost as good as a cash offer. Uh, make sure that lender is a great communicator. I've been in numerous transactions where, where somebody's picked a lender, he was great up front, but once we got into the contract, we couldn't even get the, the uh, my client couldn't get him on the phone, I couldn't get him on the phone, and it sure makes that process awkward and, and very uncomfortable. So being a great communicator really helps. Um, I would also think that if you could find a local uh, lender, I think that helps in the process also, because if he's local, probably other agents in the area know his qualifications and his abilities, 
and if he does a good job or if she does a good job and everybody knows it and you put in an offer all other things being equal if that lender is somebody special in the neighborhood or in the area then your offer has a, a stronger chance of getting accepted the third thing i'd advise is to sit down with somebody and learn the process right up front a, a real estate transaction can take 30 to 45 days just for the process uh, um, to go through but then you have to include that the, the search for the home time so it can take a couple three months um, and it can be pretty complex it, it can feel even though it's a couple three months it sounds like a long time it, when you're doing all these things in such short order it can feel the time can feel very compressed so what I like to do is I like to sit down with my my first time clients at the office or at a coffee shop and just go through the whole process. I bring my contracts out. We kind of go through all the contracts. I never have anybody sign anything up front. I just sit down, we go through the contracts, go through um, the whole process. I, I let my clients know what the search is gonna look like. I let them know what the offer writing, um, the offer writing process is gonna look like. I let them know about the inspections that are important the signing, what we do at the signing at escrow near the end. I talk to them about the closing process. And then I just sit back and I, I answer any questions my clients have. And, and like I said, it seems like a lot of time when you're, when you're going through all this, but it really isn't and, and the time feels very compressed. So the more you can learn about the process up, up front, the more comfortable you'll be going through and purchasing your first home. Um, the other thing that I'll tell you about is that any of my clients that go out with me, they always at least get a free cup of coffee. So the fourth thing I would advise is spend some time and try and find the re right real estate agent. Now there's a number of ways to do this. The, the best way I think is by referrals. If you have friends, talk to them and see if they've used a, a agent or they know an agent that that is, um, could be very helpful to you. I think referrals are the number one best way to, to decide. Now, if you can't get that referral or if you get a couple referrals and you want to kind of um, vet them a little further, maybe do what you're doing right now. Go and look at some of their videos if they have some videos. If they don't have videos, maybe they're on a professional writing site like Active Rain. You can go to activerain.com. There's agents all across the United States that write pretty prolifically on Active Rain, and you can get a real feel for what their expertise is, um, what their personality is like, um, what their knowledge is like. Um, I use it personally myself. Uh, we've bought houses in in Arizona, and we've bought houses in Arkansas and Reno, uh, Nevada. And these are some ways that I go and, and find out if I like the agents in those areas. Uh, another thing you might want to consider, do you want to work with a team? Somebody that, a team that specializes in all the different processes through the transaction? Or do you want to work with an individual real estate agent? Um, ask them up front and, and ask how they're going to be working with you. Also, call them, talk to them see who answers the phone, see how quickly they return the phone calls. Um, I think that they should be picking up the phone and talking to you up front and um, trying to help you through the processes just as early as they can. Uh, the other thing that I would let you know about some real estate agents is they may, they may ask you to sign a broker, a buyer broker agreement. Now this agreement just kind of it, it sets up conditions for them to work with you and for you to, to stick with them through the process. I don't usually use them. I think that it's just better to have uh, an open relationship and I'll show you houses and if you like what you see, what you see in me, you, you stick around with me. I, I've, also, I've also had a couple of agents try and have me sign them when I needed in particular. We just had a house that we purchased in Arkansas. 
when, when we met, he wanted me to sign one. I read through it. It obligated me to stay with him for three or four months. If I stepped out of the transaction, it was gonna cost me $500. But on the other hand, when I read about his commitment to me, he could step out any time and I would not get any remuner remuneration uh, for myself. So I just didn't think it was a fair uh, agreement. So if somebody asks you about it, Make sure you read through it. Make sure you're very comfortable with it. Make sure you're very comfortable with the broker, uh, by, uh, the agent or the broker before you sign it um, because it's just like any other contract. Um, I'll tell you this, the, the person that gave me the buyer broker agreement in Arkansas, I just told him no and he still helped me through the whole process. And um, I just told him if he did a great job, I'd be there and if he didn't do a great job, then I wouldn't and it all worked out. So the fifth tip I'd give you is just be prepared for the, the move. Have a little extra money saved for, for when you're in that moving process. Maybe you're gonna need a U-Haul to rent. Maybe you're gonna have to hire some movers. Maybe uh, on those inspections that you did, there were some repairs to be done and, and it'd probably be easier to get those repairs done before you move in the house. Uh, maybe you want to make that house your own home right off the bat, get some of your custom colors done and do some painting through the house. Maybe you need a little extra furniture, but all of those things, it would be great just to have a little extra money put aside just for that part of the process. Um, the other thing is have a little flexibility with that move-in date. It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes things happen. We were uh, ready, one of my clients was ready to move into their house and we had a big rainstorm come in and there was no way anybody was going to move in those next few days. Um, sometimes a seller will have an issue, maybe his, his uh, transaction doesn't close as quickly as, as, as he thought it was and maybe he's going to, he has no place to go for a day or two. So it, it helps to have a little flexibility. Um, you can have your agent reach out to the agent on the other side through the process and kind of monitor how everything's going on the seller side. That can help, but really having a, a, a little flexibility of a, of a day or two worked in there can really work to your advantage. Um, so anyway, those are the five uh, tips I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching my video. Again, my name is Ray Henson from eXp Realty. Feel free to uh, call me at any time with any of your questions. My contact information is in the comments below. If you really enjoyed the video today, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and maybe take a look at a couple other of my videos. Thank you very much.